Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry, we're having some sort of technical difficulties as we try to get logged into all of our accounts. Um, we don't have a formal presentation today, so we're just gonna be going through <coughs> some of the stuff that we're doing in the building room with projects um, uh, on box.com and on monday.com. And we're just uh, using a third-party computer, so we're kind of getting logged in, and I'm time challenged this morning, so we're working on it. But um, I'm here with Bob Ruff, Geraldine, and Mirbeck. And um, morning. we'll, at various times, talk about different projects that, that are going on and, and what, uh, what the progress is on the stuff that we're doing in the building room. All right, do we want to start <coughs> on um, MVD Light? Anybody want to? Do we want to just go down the list and talk about everything on the list? You're okay with that? You've been dragged into this whole thing, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. So let's start here with uh, uh, Lean for Manufacture, DFMA. Do you want to do that? No. <laughs> Normally uh, what we do is. I think I can. Yeah, yeah. Lean construction, Lean for Manufacture. Yeah, design for manufacturing assembly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, also, uh, online participants. Ah, so you yes, give me that. Just, that's fine. Just hold it while you play. I will hold it. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, good morning, online participants, or good day, wherever you are. Um, so we'll give you some small updates uh, on the current uh, initiatives and the current projects. So there will be a small insight what we'll have currently, in, um, like uh, David said, we have on Monday our project management tool, and we have, we'll show you the potential topics that we expect that will come as activity proposals in our in our uh, into our um, roadmap. So, as you can see, the DFMA um, design for manufacturing assembly uh, was uh, presented several times. Um, the team consists of uh, several manufacturing experts and also experts in prefabrication. They really uh, started to draft a uh, white paper and uh, led by uh, Richard Kelly. He, uh, he made uh, several um, attempts to show what's the current condition and uh, of uh, prefabrication industry and uh, uh, how uh, that could help uh, to bring forward uh, the current strategies of uh, buildings and um, housing and uh, how open beam standards and services would help there. So that's the uh, main topic and they're currently being, um, let's say, uh, revived and there'll be uh, some white paper so yeah, following. Do we have a project manager, it looks like, or do we have a project manager? Uh, I think it's still open, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's to, to be, uh, Assigned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we always need. Yeah. I mean, I think if people are interested in in the project per se, you know, they could get involved in some way if they want. I think they should contact Richard Kelly, and yeah. he's the main uh, lead on this topic. Um, the interesting part that the lean uh, from manufacturers uh, re it's really widespread. There are a lot of uh, local, um, like uh, in uh, within the chapters, they have. Uh, I heard that. Uh, um, some working groups exist. Uh, we we're also in, in building, uh, building smart Germany also start, starting uh, lean uh, roundtable. So that will be also maybe uh, potential do docking uh, groups that they will, of course, as a stakeholder, will support this initiative. So we can go back, right? Yeah. Um, that's DFMA is really important and. Uh, um, all this best practice should be, of course, uh, documented on this uh, white paper. So, of course, your knowledge, as a, if you are domain expert, is really welcome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we kind of, <clears throat> we kind of sort of jumped in. I think went into a, a, talking about a project, but for for people who may not be familiar um, with Building Smart or the roadmap or the process. Um, I thought I'd pop back over to our roadmap um, here and just kind of hit some of the, the high points um, so you understand sort of how the projects are 
uh, how they come about and <clears throat> excuse me, how they go through um, uh, a process. And so, you know, we're not going to go through every single page here, but um, I wanted to go ahead. No, no. I'm You're going to go down to that? Yeah. yeah. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Um, so basically, uh, the way the process works is we, you know, are always looking for projects. So if you have an idea for uh, something that you feel like should be implemented within um, the IFC uh, framework, and you know, it addresses some some need in the building community that's not being met by current IFC, um, then we can bring that in and we start to put it through a process where uh, the steering committee and the standards committee and everybody starts to look at it and decide you know if it's something that we should pursue um, there are several kind of components to uh, the things that we pursue and I think a lot of it is you know like when Mirbeck was talking about the last project you know it doesn't have a project manager so you know leadership um, and and some invested interest in you know moving it forward is really important so you know if it's your idea but you're not really a project manager then maybe you know you find someone or we look for someone um, the other big component is money right and so these things need to usually get funded uh, in some way and so we're also looking for uh, uh, donors and patrons to you know help move the project forward and maybe it's a maybe it's a vendor um, maybe it's companies that have a vested interest so uh, it kind of varies but I think those two components are, are pretty important um, BSI does have, you know, a process and forms for uh, all of these things to kind of be fit into so that your uh, project idea is uniform and meets the same kind of set of criteria and is formatted in the same way as, as all the other projects. Anything to add, Rob? No, I, I think that you covered it, yeah. Um, Yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all on the steering committee, so, you know, we're just part of the process, really, is, you know, we meet uh, on a monthly basis, sometimes a little more, um, basically, to look and see, you know, we have a project meeting, and we have a building room steering meeting, and we're looking at, you know, how things are progressing, uh, what projects are coming in. Um, Mirbeck mentioned that, you know, there's a whole variety of them that we have here that, that aren't started as proposals. Um, you know, they don't have project managers, they may not be funded, but... Um, they're things that we decided that are worth pursuing. Um, so there's uh, MVD uh, light, which is a model view definition um, schema. And then uh, I don't know what IFC distribution port is. Do you know what that is? It's still like an MEP thing? Think, oh, it could be. Yeah, yeah, it's still related, started. So, yeah. <clears throat> And IFC rebar is one that, that we've had uh, around for a while, and that's fairly obvious. Uh, DFMA, which Mirbeck just talked about. Um, I think uh, Jeffrey Ouellette has got a session tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we have a session on a different topic. Uh, this one is an old, really old initiative. Um, it was, I think, uh, before the pandemic started. Yeah. I think it's a three or four years ago already. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of these, you know, I mean, uh, they, you know. There are a lot of projects on here. Steel construction, um, Luke Faulkner, uh, uh, that one's you know been around for a while and it's kind of. Have, uh, I can update you about that because I'm also involved okay. in uh, coordinating that working group. But steel construction. Uh, it's fine. Well, I don't know. That yeah. It's so, like that, that's fine. Yeah. Um, steel construction is um, it's uh, it's old uh, publication. There is an IDM, existing IDM, and there is a MVD. Um, based on a IFC 2x3 schema, and, uh, and there are um, several exchange models being defined, and uh, one of them precisely done uh, until MVD. So there is an MVD on fabrication. It's not just uh, steel construction, but one use case specific one for fabrication. So it means the uh, part until you go through the whole process map and then at the end you have uh, you deliver your fabrication model to the to uh, assembly team 
So it means uh, this project is an initiative. We had an activity proposal being accepted by all committees, from steering committee, SATs, and so on. And uh, at the end, we had an um, expert panel. It's, of course, expert panel is was like extraordinary. It's, it's not just an, a classical expert panel when you have your deliverables. We have, uh, we, uh, we wanted to reach uh, the broader community and the community who really works in uh, steel construction uh, to know their opinion, to ask their uh, expectations and the requirements so that we did and we invited several organizations and uh, um, software vendors, of course, uh, um, end users who are really um, prepared that uh, fabrication models. So that was a really productive meeting. We had uh, uh, many participants, mo mostly online, because we had an online uh, meeting. I forgot about the conversation. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like here, so, you so as you can see, um, the part of that uh, uh, that will be done um, uh, in two uh, phases, let's say phase one, we will uh, review the old MVD, as it has to be updated in IFC 4. So you have to upgrade what, what's missing, and then as a stage two, uh, upgrade the, the IDM, because it will be, um, let's say, country specific, the <coughs> specifics you have to somehow uh, transport to the end users. And especially the challenge was uh, in this project that two countries involved, uh, uh, USA and uh, and Germany, both countries are federated states. So you have federated land within the country. You have some regulations that you focus. So that the idea to map uh, all the requirements, standards, and codes uh, through um, uh, property server and and uh, push some uh, standardized in BSTD. So the building smart data dictionary will play a major role as well. So yeah, small okay. update. Yeah. And you're all welcome to join us, of course, if you're interested and to see the activity. Uh, fire safety engineer, what? By the way, uh, on our website, uh, buildingsmart.org, and then you go to the building group, they see some uh, they see the activities as well. So this is Monday, this is our back end, but we publish it as well on our uh, buildingsmart.org uh, website. You can see the actual status of the project as well. Yeah, we can say so. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, I would suggest you not to show them internal, internal stuff. Okay. So, uh, fire safety engineering, um, been going on a while. Pete Thompson, Peter Lawrence. Um, they've presented several times uh, at summits uh, on their efforts. Yeah, there is a, a, a request uh, or a, a, a request for action or um, on our website oh. as well. So uh, a call for a call for uh, no, a call for supporters. Yeah, call for supporters, offer supporters in there and sponsorship of course. Yeah, 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 as well. So um, they've been looking for funding for. And we will have a, we will have a, a, a whole session about it. Yeah, yeah. there is a whole, uh, there will be a session. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So later on, there will be a whole sitting about it. Can and one, the one way. nice thing is that now we are in a European project, a tender uh, on this specific uh, project as well, or the topic as well. And we are looking for how we can uh, uh, integrate. And then asset operation uh, handover, we've got. Yeah, we've yeah. got several presentations. This this uh, we will have this uh, summit. So yeah, we will have workshops combined with uh, other rooms uh, later on as well. Uh, Fred Kloot, who is uh, the project lead of it, uh, is here and he's going to present uh, 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 well uh, uh, later in this summit. Uh, I think that there are now uh, five or. Well, at least we're seven in the main, but five uh, white papers are produced already about the, uh, the handover of, of facility management. And uh, now it's time to uh, develop a call of threat uh, over those uh, white papers, and they are going to be presented as well. <coughs> so they've, they've taken, um, Bill East has joined the sort of Building Smart International group. And they have taken Kobe, and we're really looking at Kobe and revamping Kobe under um, the auspices of Fred. 
So as you said, they've generated... Oh, please use the these... mic for better audio, that's what they ask. Oh, oh. Oh, my. They've generated the five white papers that were spoken of, and they've also broken it into basically vertical and horizontal infrastructure, so that we have two aspects, because both aspects need a handover at the end of it. So it's a very much a holistic approach for um, the life cycle uses. And it's, it's a significant project which is making its way through. Um, it's got a lot of interest and it's got a lot of support. And um, it's really important. So that, that is um, chuntering through at a, a fairly significant pace. Yep. But, oh, sorry. Yeah. But like uh, uh, what David said in the beginning, uh, we have a lack of funding there as well. So <laughs> actually, if you are a supporter of this topic, please uh, let us know, because otherwise we can't uh, fulfill all the obligations. Yeah, yeah I think um, <clears throat> I think that uh, this, I don't know if this is the first summit, but I feel like we're very, very focused on all of FM right now. It's a yeah. very, very hot topic, and it's a very important topic. So obviously, to building owners, and um, there's a lot of traction, but yeah, funding. I think, like always, yes, funding comes into the picture. Um, it's the the white papers are worth reading if you've any interest at all in the topic. Then, the, which Richard mentioned yesterday, those five papers are definitely worth a, a read through. And it's broken down into um, airports. Excuse me, I have to correct you guys. Sorry, but um, this is a different project. We have uh, this is a project from Bangladesh. Yeah. We're talking about the least one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can extend that there is. A, um, you need a, the mic. No, no, no. For the audience at home. Okay. They are currently working on the. There will be definitely extension to in IFC 4.3. Yep. And uh, that has been even, the, as far as I remember, uh, during the review that we did in the building room for that part. You remember? Um, the, that uh, Bill East uh, request, Dr. Bill East requested us to um, to employ, uh, to take into account uh, his wishes. I thought that was technical uh, team of the side. They, uh, they they did that implementation. Like small extensions that was uh, vital for that project. I think that that was really important. That so uh, IFC 4.3 enables that uh, really imp important uh, items. Let's say. Uh, Assets to be covered. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, moving on to some of the work that's in uh, development. Um, you know, you uh, probably see. I'm sorry. Oh, Jeffrey uh, Lett's name on a lot of these things. He's very active, um, and these things have. Go ahead. Yeah, um, th this project will be presented. To uh, Bim and Bam, uh, we have a session tomorrow. It's really important. Uh, we have a with, uh, together with Jeffrey and uh, Gianluca will join us. Um, we uh, worked on the technical um, report, which is like uh, uh, IDM as a based on uh, information delivery manual. Um, this uh, technical report has been circulated within the community so far and reviewed. We got some uh, positive feedback. And the important thing that this project now uh, is on the final stages. Let's say we'll uh, make a, a short presentation tomorrow. Um, the session is open to everyone. It's uh, free uh, to join. You can share the link. It's uh, publicly available. We made a call for participants. Um, and uh, additionally, we had a uh, support from the EU European Commission it, as a part of uh, EU Climate Pact satellite event. It was been recognized as a satellite event, and this session is also dedicated that we uh, we try to uh, to reach the consensus on this very important topic. It's not so easy. Thank you. No. No, that's fine. Um, fire occupant movement analysis. Uh, I know they need funding. That's all. I they. Have uh, I keep clicking on that, but um, that's also uh, completely approved, and and I think they're just looking for again funding. 
um, facilities management and open BIM. Is that Fred talking about oh, that, that tomorrow as well? That, that's so, the one, yeah. Yeah, that's the one that, that Rob just talked about. Um, quantity takeoff uh, was MVD. I don't know the status of that one either or spatial zone. Quite a QTO um, done by uh, Jan uh, currently and uh, has been, I think, I reached, uh, if you will, uh, candidate standard, BSI candidate standard. If you can scroll to the right side, mm -hmm. I, it is, yeah, as you can see, current uh, status is on, yeah, it's approved as a candidate standard. And uh, as you can see, um, it's, it's, it's been, uh, the idea that uh, MVD would uh, would convert it uh, to IDS information delivery specification, and uh, um, the team should work on that because uh, MVD would uh, would maybe not possible, I guess. But then I'm not sure how uh, how they will proceed so far. Um, quantity takeoff has been uh, presented also on the last summit. There is a recording you can, if you need some details, you can find it there, also on the document. And including, I guess, uh, the MVD XML. So? And, and IFC4 done. precast is done. Ah, yeah. Absolutely. So, so final, final and done. Um, spatial zone. Oh, spatial zone. Who wants it? Anybody? You. <laughs> okay, then I can do that. I just give you the microphone. No, it's a fine. As a, a spatial zone, um, technical, it's a technical report. Um, we had uh, led by, actually, led by Gianluca Genova and um, Yoshinobu Adachi. I think uh, someone else. Yeah. That, uh, um, there is an activity proposal, um, and then uh, Finally, made it to create an, a project proposal that was approved. Um, there is a presentation that uh, to show what uh, is currently possible, and uh, that's why we decided to create an IDM. Because not many uh, vendors, not many users know them. Uh, how uh, I mean, most uh, predefined types, how to use them, and uh, there are some types that will be would really needed to be extended. There are like examples, fire safety zones. Uh, and it's not uh, to confuse with IFC zones, there's IFC spatial zone. And uh, there's a different hierarchy. So they have a specific, um, how can I say, uh, volumetric um, boundaries that you can definitely use not only in an indoor environment, but also outdoor for infrastructure. That's why there are really interesting use cases being uh, like uh, um, developed. And, uh, and the presentation also available from the previous summit. You can see that. And uh, the latest, we had uh, also an expert panel with many participants to know their expectations. Um, the, and the on the BSI forum, if you know the forum where we discuss and uh, ask uh, our international community about opinions or technical um, support, uh, that forum is, uh, is an important place where you could uh, communicate with a broader uh, expert of uh, like pool of uh, experts. And then, uh, we have uh, proposed to extend some types there, including types like in the landscape architecture, like biotopes, biosphere, or um, examples from laboratory, like laboratory planning zones. Um, that might be interesting cases as well. So I'll give you back. I'm okay. done. We'll have Ron talk about this. Yeah, uh, I just mentioned that we are publishing. Uh, on our website as well. So if you uh, if you go to the buildingsmart.org website and you go to the standards rooms building room and you scroll all the way down, there you see our projects. So uh, the projects that were just uh, mentioned by you are here as well. So we have the BIM to building energy model uh, proposal, the fire safety engineering call for sponsorship. So that's what I meant. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, to show you uh, 
No, it's 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 not complete. N not complete no, we do yet. Have one, one completed project. You mean the completion of uh, I the? Mean, if, if we have a list of all you mean a complete list. list. Um, this is like kind of, like we just showed in uh, in Monday. No, no, no. no. We, we, yeah, we'll, on, the, on the project on the uh, roadmap, you can. See on the roadmap, there is. It's and public yeah, available. It's, you can, you can see yeah. And you see the current projects here, and current and expected projects. So you the current project and in, uh, in their status and the potential. But I think to answer your question, there's no. Uh, Live version of Monday.com that that shows that I mean we need to we need to actually kind of update this document right to show that stuff so so it's kind of incumbent on us but I think it's mostly accurate I mean yes. it's mostly all here so but it's a moving target and that you yeah. know, new things are always coming online so it's yeah. and this is a static document the roadmap so the roadmap isn't. And it's built from, you know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, three, four years ago, back before the pandemic and stuff, you know, we were just sort of getting started with the building room and a roadmap. And, uh, you know, there were just a few projects and it's just kind of snowballed, I think, in the last, you know, two years. Just There's just a lot of stuff coming into the room. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> again, I, I hate to like bang on it, but, you know, a lot of them just require uh someone to kind of take the lead and some money it's just it's just the fact of well how we do this right you know as a as a as an org right we're just dependent on outside sources for uh all of this stuff and so a lot of projects <clears throat> tend to sit or you know, or languish or you know take longer than we think they could because they just a there's a funding gap so you know, people need to be able to work on this. It's not, you know, like uh, coming to the conference and talking and doing stuff. This is all like uh, pro bono. We just kind of donate our time. But, you know, a lot of people can't do that, do their job and work on, you know, an open standards project to extend things without some way to offset the cost of that. So, um, yeah, funding. I feel like I've always got a hat on it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I think, you know, a lot of people bring ideas to the building room and they're looked at and considered as to whether we think that that's a great idea that would be really useful for the industry. But then it's it's getting um, the volunteers to actually support moving that from an idea and a concept into reality. And that's quite a long road because you've got to go through all the various stages and get sign off and then come back. So, you know, it's not an idea. Here's my paper. Away you go. Um, it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time and it's usually volunteer time. Yeah, and you know, ideas. I, I, that's in no way to say that anybody who's got an idea should just say, "Well, you know, I don't have." Don't get out ahead of it and say, "Well, you know, I don't know where the money's going to come from, and I don't know who would help or, or whether I'd be to just." You know, we still want the ideas. We still want to get them in the process. And if it takes a long time, it takes a long time. I mean, like. I think everybody said we've had some projects that have been in here. Well, some predate my coming on to this or probably all of us. I mean, so, um, you know, the, it can take a long time, but the, the good ideas have a way of working their way to the top and finding people who are interested and, and getting some, some money approved. So I think the ideas should always keep coming and there shouldn't be any, there's no bad ideas. No. Well, didn't you have one? <laughs> well, actually, um, we, we are calling people, at least in, in our region, I'm from the Netherlands, um, we are calling people to, to, to come up with ideas because uh, as, a building, as a local building smart chapter, sometimes we have f some funds available, like in Germany as well, to kickstart a project. And then, of course, if you kickstart it, then you can, uh, yeah, people, uh, uh, yeah, got the people to, to contribute. So that uh, that can be really helpful. So please go to your local chapter as well. You have a question, sir? Just one question. What interests you in the building room project that you see? Between projects and use cases? Yes. You mentioned this table of the finished uh, table. Yeah, this one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. How is it managed the different scopes? 
for uh, this idea? Well, the, the those are t t t uh, the, the topics, the, uh, the targeted yeah. topics yeah. case yeah. are, yeah. yes. Where are they coming from and who decided to take that project? Yeah. And that was, I, I wanted to, okay. while, while we were next taking over, I did want to scroll up quickly and just talk about, well, go ahead, Herbert. No, fine. I mean, those though so during the development of this um, of this U, uh, roadmap, we identified some topics. So potential use cases are really vital to building domain. That's, and of course, uh, we asked com community opinion of uh, our steering community members, the working groups, what the current topics and where we have potential pinpoint problems, problems and issues, where, where we need uh, um, our action, and especially uh, experience from the uh, industry, because you know the timber, just an example, timber construction, they're struggling, uh, especially in the prefabrication area, they're struggling uh, transporting the information models uh, uh, with the help of IFC or that some information should be standardized so the workflow should be optimized or completely reconsidered and uh, uh, some use cases that we identified example of steel construction that's coming with the activity proposal so we don't decide just like that like uh, let's do the project yeah that's 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 now a, not our intention there is a psi process and a strict process we if someone uh, coming with an idea, the idea should be uh, prepared in one standardized document showing all ins and outs of upcoming project, like ins and outs, like literature review, it's important. If current project is already published, it's standard, it's, I don't know, it's available, and in order to avoid double work, in order to avoid uh, potential collisions with current or ongoing projects, you should uh, check before if this project is already somewhere outside of, maybe also outside of Building Smart or in other, maybe also in locally in chapter being developed. So you will be, uh, there are some sp uh, scientific papers being published. So you know that, uh, that this work could be profitable. So you mention them in your activity proposal as a, and under the literature review, um, you could, of course, uh, maybe even uh, possible to inv invite that people because they did their great job and to improve that topic and uh, related use case. So that will be covered. All the steps, including um, step for uh, deliverables, what you will deliver at the end, what, uh, which standards you will use as an open BIM standards, which standards you at the end will uh, improve or I don't know, uh, processes. And uh, at the end, this activity proposal will go through the steering committee to, as a review if we accept, most likely, and we never rejected any. <laughs> so um, this will be accepted by a steering committee, then all following committees, uh, standards committee, technical executive, standards committee, executive standards, and the whole community, BSI community will decide is it really important, is it really relevant. And then after all, we're done. So it means then you start your project as an official project. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, up higher in the in the roadmap, I just, you know, we, to, to kind of follow on to what Mirbeck was saying about project development and initiation. You know, we're kind of looking at these metrics, right? And we sort of have a loose tool that uh, we've, we've talked about using that really kind of weights these, right? So you you kind of decide which ones are, are the most important uh, and then and then take that and and find out which things are, are actually uh, applicable to your project and then score them like from one to 10 and kind of come up with a thing. So, you know, for, for most projects, you know, having these three bottom ones, vendor buy-in, funding and expertise are really important, right? Obviously funding, but vendor buy-in is, is kind of this, um, it, it's something that we've talked about a lot, I think in the past. And I think when Autodesk spoke yesterday at the, at the opening session uh, and when Richard Kelly spoke, you know, you saw that there's a lot more vendor participation and interest in buy-in now, right? And without without the vendors whose products are using these open standards, it, without without their buy-in, these projects go nowhere. 
It doesn't matter if they're well-staffed and well-funded, if at the end of the day, nobody is going to put it in their piece of software. And that's a, you know, that's a big deal to, to be doing that. Um, without that, the, the projects just don't end up being implemented and, and, uh, and working. I mean, we can put it in the IFC, but if, if someone's implementation of, uh, you know, a tool doesn't uh, use that latest um, IFC, then, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. So I think you, you saw that on the, the Monday list that there are a lot of projects that people wanted to do and they're on the list, but then they stall out because there isn't the um, real buy-in from a broader community. It's, it's very specific. And if you're focused on something that's very specific, then you really need to have all the pieces in place to drive it through the process. And that's really what the roadmap is is about is talking about you know the, the whole process and and how we uh, how we get started how we kind of find the ideas how we move them through the process how they're approved by uh, the committees this graphic is kind of meant to encapsulate all of that um into into uh one kind of easy to digest uh picture and so again you know if you're on the um, you know, if you're on the uh, Building Smart site, you can get access to this roadmap and, and read through it. Yeah, so you're asking how how projects flow from yeah. from the local chapters to the international, or the other way around. Or the other way around. Um, I think it usually happens from the local chapters to to us. But you know, uh, Mirbeck is a good case in point. <laughs> <laughs> the German chapters, no, a, no. Lot of stuff. a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah indeed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm not, I'm oh, fine, that fine. Um, the initiative coming from chapters are always welcome, and they are mainly coming, of course, with this activity proposals. And if you go to BSI proposals, it's always um, mandatory to have. It was the first corrigendum. I think it was uh, uh, one chapter, or. Uh, in the second corrigendum, uh, there was already a requirement of two chapters because one chapter uh, cannot deliver standard life, right? So there should be opinion of a uh, neighboring country or in, the, in some cases even uh, better neighboring co continent if you're like we did with steel construction. There are experts in the USA, experts in Germany, so they joined together. They also, Swiss chapter joined us, uh, I think, uh, um, other experts in uh, Japan, they also interested in this initiative. So that when, whenever we in building room start a call for proposal uh, or a call for participation, that means this activity come from someone, probably from chapter, also from member, from Building Smart International member, or this initiative uh, is being currently developed, so it will be uh, your chance to join. That's how you can engage uh, in these activities. Other way around, when one uh, activity, um, let's say, is being initiated in, within the building room, it will be again a call of uh, participation. Yet, uh, this call of participation also will go to local chapters. So it will be communicated through management office, uh, the um, project coordinator, in this case, our uh, uh, coordinator is John Proctor. He will send an invitation to all uh, chapters uh, so that chapters themselves as a uh, entity will they will um, uh, spread uh, among their uh, community in uh, local newsletters, whatever uh, publishing and social media. And that's how we at least in Germany also do this way. Whenever BSI publish something, we, of course, translate that, we adapt it, and uh, share it with our members. We, uh, we did the same way. Um, the, these stages that you have seen, this review of activity proposal, review of um, detailed project proposal, or expert panels, uh, review of uh, candidate standards and uh, uh, final standards, it, they all go to BSI community. At the end, the standard community is a, is a whole community 
consists of SAC members, international members. I think uh, um, the steering committees again and uh, subcommittee, uh, all the related committees, uh, they, they did their job. They reviewed, they give their feedback, endorsement. So that will be now community to decide, yes, no. So that is uh, um, that case when the international ch chapters uh, will uh, engage. And there, this review always um, communicated with the local chapters. So this is a case when we uh, like share our uh, intermediate results or final results with uh, um, end users and child international uh, experts. So that's, <laughs> uh, one thing we yeah, one thing we don't do or one thing that doesn't happen is we don't come up with this stuff. I mean the steering committee and building smart you know management outside of the community, but just you know John Proctor and Richard Kelly and the people that you know you hear about that are kind of running building smart uh, and the steering committee, which is made up of volunteers. You know we're not we're not coming up with. I mean, we can come up with ideas, but it's not like, you know, our mandate. Um, we're more a conduit, right? Um, either, you know, like Mirbeck said, from from things that come into Building Smart out to the local chapters or vice versa. And I think a good place, I just pulled up the Building Smart International Forum. Um, I think the forum is, is a good place. And, you know, we've been pushing it every summit since it was kind of developed um, five, six years ago, something like that, kind of kicked off and it was very slow, but now it's very robust and there's a lot of um, uh, back and forth and feedback in there. And so um, a lot of stuff comes to Building Smart from the forum, from people who uh, may or may not even be uh, members, but you know, you can sign up and log in there and join in the conversation for you know, any of these things that happen to get going, there's, you know, categories here for topics. Um, so if there's a, a place that, you know, you're particularly interested in, uh, FM Handover or whatever, you know, you can get into any of these conversations um, and start finding out and kind of getting your finger on the pulse of what people are interested in or what people are talking about. You had a question. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 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 you were mentioning the course of participation. I think that's a kind of a, a weak link. Uh, uh, I uh, experience that we get a lot of activity proposals to comment and vote on, but often they are uh, already staffed by some people, and uh, it's not open. It's, it's obvious that uh, uh, there is room for additional participation. We're struggling with trying to get our members to participate more, but it doesn't seem like you're very welcome. So I think this process is not, of course, a building room issue. It's an overall building part issue. To have a very clear process on how to, to call for participation. Yeah. And I want yeah. Okay, noted. Noted, that's a valid point. Yeah. I think, you know, Message across all of the chapters. Well, that's the you know. I think. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is. Um, sometimes I see uh, and I think about like all the chapters as kind of these silos, right? Like the Swiss chapter may not know what the German chapter is doing or the Chinese chapter, and so part of what you know maybe is. Uh, Building Smart's next effort to, to look for is a way to connect those silos so that the information that's, you know, harvest more information about what's going on in a particular chapter and make sure that all the other chapters know about it. Um, that could help well, we a little have, bit with we, we have a monthly have a chapter call. Point, uh, I don't go to monthly chapter no, calls. Oh, you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. We ha there is a, a, but, minimum, a monthly. Yeah. Me, it's a monthly chapter leader calls. Maybe you know that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that sessions are all recorded and they later published in uh, uh, Vimeo channel of BS BSI. Uh, so there, you experience, of course, your uh, community that uh, um, outside uh, uh, BSI. 
uh, within what what topics being developed within the chapters. So of course, it's uh, uh, it means one once it will be like uh, your turn as a chapter um, in between if you're really interested to join something, and uh, if uh, if you. Uh, Subscribe to the new BSI newsletter. The in within the newsletter is always is this all uh, call for participation. Always, it, it doesn't matter in which uh, stages. And I think uh, um, the earlier uh, you get this newsletter, the the better, because uh, there you will see that uh, the project. Yeah, I absolutely agree. If there is already a project formed, there will be a chance to join it. It will not big deal. But uh, uh, um, as you said to feel uncomfortable that you are joining the project, not from the very beginning, of course. Then should be a stage, like a formation stage, like uh, there is an international project being formed, something like that. That would, this session we did in uh, at the first BSI uh, virtual summit, there were a lot of uh, um, inputs from different chapters on timber construction. That's the uh, same. So again, the importance of uh, this uh, meeting like today uh, to come and join BSI Summit is the most important. There you experience what's going on now. Some countries too don't, don't have a chapter. The little country that I'm from uh, in the United States sort of kind of been dancing around building smart and is sort of kind of into that. But, you know, you know there's a lot of work going on there with stuff that, I don't know. Like I'm not part of I, I haven't uh, up until like last year I haven't really been in a in a chapter I've just been part of Building Smart International so that's why I'm not on Rob's call. No no no. It's, oh, you're done. Okay. Yeah. So anybody have anything else online or otherwise? You see? No, Rob? no. I I logged out. So. Oh, you logged out. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Maybe it's on this Streamyard thing here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to log in again. No, you're. I got you here. Yeah, that seems like all. So we'll hope to see you at uh, eleven. Eleven, yeah. And uh, later at uh, at the Bill is uh, and Jeffrey's uh, session. Yeah, I think um, are all the sessions for the building room in this same room. Yeah, it's all here. Yeah, so that's easy. Um, the topic tomorrow we will be covering, uh, of course, we invited several uh, green building association organizations. No, no, no. They all will be joining no, I was looking us, at it on at least yeah. some of them online, and uh, we expect that this topic will be finalized and published. No, no, fine, just uh, announced before. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. No, otherwise we go already. Okay. So, we can finish the session, I think, right? Yeah, so, if there's no other questions online or here, then we can be done. Thank you for your attention. attention yes. yeah.